Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Phil from Zade Comics. I'm the writer and co-creator of Magic Hop and the Lost Pages. Lost Pages launching this Friday on Indiegogo and just one half of the two best looking brothers in all of comics. And today we have a very special guest, an interview uh, of someone that I'm working really close with on the Lost Pages, Alan Alonzo, a.k.a. The Howl Comics. What's up, brother? Thank you. Thank you for being here, man. No problem. How's everybody? Good, man. This was kind of like a last minute stream. I usually try to do these every Wednesday and I didn't know who to, who to get on, but I'm like, we're launching this week. So why not, you know, interview uh, my boy, the Howl comics uh, about this <laughs> awesome story and, you know, kind of like how you got into comics and stuff like that. We'll take a look at some of your, uh, the fan pieces, which, which I was kind of introduced to your art through, all the awesome fan art you do for like all the different uh, drawing shows, which is, is so sick. Like if you guys haven't seen his Instagram or his Twitter, definitely look him up. The Howl Comics. He does amazing renditions of these these you know awesome indie characters, uh, and we'll we'll go through that. But uh, hey, what's up, everybody in the chat? We got Art City Comics. Zade, what? <laughs> what's up, man? Thanks for tuning in and everybody else that is watching. So, uh, Alan, do you mind if I call you Alan? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay. so you're not doxing me or anything. Yeah, I don't want to dox you. <laughs> no, you're good. Do. I'm good. Yeah, um, so I wanted to know, like, usually when I do these interviews, kind of introduce the people I'm interviewing to my audience. So kind of talk about how you got into what you're doing now, like going from wherever you were. I know you, you do a lot of graphic work as well. Going from there, into comics and getting into this kind of like indie comic world yeah well you know i started like everyone else you know you start listening to your boy zach and uh, yeah. captain cummings back in the day and um started noticing how everything was getting kind of weird and comics. damn you're og brother yeah man i was like hey this uh this riri william stuff is uh kind of <laughs> getting on my nerves yeah and uh at the same time i was noticing some um that the indie scene was i don't know just getting closer to it i know that the stories were more passionate yeah and um there was less you know less uh uh corporate room decisions being made on the indie scene you know yeah you got people who really love their characters and really love their stories and mm -hmm. um but yeah it's uh, just one of those things and uh i've always been drawing i've been drawing since i was 16 years old uh, I learned I learned the ropes with a guy named Dan Wickline, who is a writer in the industry. Um, yeah, he used to have a comic book come hardline. So I was really uh, amused when you guys called your your Monday streams hardline. It just reminded me of that. Oh, really? Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah there was a lot of uh, deliberation in the back rooms of what we were going to call our stream, uh, but we yeah we settled on hardline. Um, that that's that's cool. We we even like Googled stuff and didn't really see anything that was comic related to that. Um, but yeah, if, oh, you, if no, you guys are just it's a ghost. That comes oh yeah. A ghost. I mean yeah, it was it, it came up. It was his dream of his. Uh, of his. Yeah. And um, he, but he but he's uh, drawing for people. I think he works for Dynamite now. Oh wow. But yeah, cool. he showed he showed me the ropes on how this industry works, and I got introduced to a lot of artists. You know, I was like 16 years old. I was blown away. Yeah. Um, guy walter mcdaniel if i remember his name right he was the artist on deadpool uh he showed me a lot of tips and tricks and that just started the bug and i you know i went i went from there no oh, that, that's awesome man if you guys are just tuning in we're interviewing my boy alan alonzo who is the premier artist on the masquerade story in the lost pages as you can see he's doing some colors here he does the pencils inks and colors all on that story um it's so awesome that we got to do this together man because when i've actually approached you months earlier about doing um maybe a, a different story down the line and you were busy with uh your own uh project which you were doing uh, like a, a card game or is that right yeah i have a, a board game that i was that i have built it's it's mm -hmm. pretty much um i want 80 percent finished yeah but i just uh having a hard time looking for developers because if I get it at the time, if I had it made here, it was going to cost an eye and a leg, and I want 
I want a board game to be in everybody's hands, you know? So right. I go, oh, yeah. well, that means I have to settle for China or Korea, you know, to get it distributed or made. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, just lately. Yeah, and my... then this uh, came up and... Oh, oh yeah, the, the whole COVID thing came up and, you know, I put a stop to everything. Yeah. Right, yeah, and then I kind of... Uh... You know, I had an artist for the masquerade and he, he was a, a different guy and he kind of, he did a four page story for me, which is going to be available in the bonus comic. Uh, but he, then he, you know, he was going to school and he was on some other projects and he couldn't do this. I think it's a 14 page story for the, for the main book. And I was looking around and I saw this, uh, I'll, I'll pull it up actually. I'll, I'll try to screen share here. I saw this piece that you did um, for the drawn and cornered fan edition, um, and it was the Dick Tracy piece. You remember that one? Yeah, the Dick Tracy piece. Yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah, and just seeing that, I'm like, man, this is perfect for uh, for the masquerade because it's totally that that time frame and everything about this just you know screams Dick Tracy. It screams the uh, early you know the 19 30s and and such and i'm like i gotta see what alan's version of the masquerade looks like because this just hits the nail on the head the flapper girl outfit you got you know flat top and prune face and uh dick tracy there who's the other guy is that uh that's uh i think i was like a baby face character it was just a real oh, fat yeah. guy <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so you are like have this really cool character uh caricature characterizations of of uh people even like in the what we're seeing here in your version you know of the masquerade with these these background characters that are they're just background characters but each of them have such a distinct face to them um and personality which i love you just pump personality into your characters in the book uh, and that's why I'm so excited for people to get their hands on it and read this masquerade story. Uh, so, you know, I, I hit you up, asked you if you were available, um, and you know, you, you wanted to do it, which was amazing. And, you know, you're doing a great job. You're one of the hardest working artists I've worked with, man. It's, it's great to see, uh, someone with such motivation and, and drive in this industry right now. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, it's making me look good for sure. <laughs> yeah, I know an artist uh, got a, a a drummer's reputation, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, man. And uh, yeah, I've I've uh, seen people who have lost artists on several books of of different uh, IPs, and that kind of sucks. But yeah, I, you know, um, I try to stay. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's like it's my name out there, you know. Yeah, I, I try to maintain a good reputation. It, it's your name when you're when you're drawing for other people, and you you want to uh, do a good job. For sure, yeah, and that, that's uh, how I found you. I remember one of the earliest pieces that I uh, noticed your work was actually this piece here um, for Graveyard Shift, your little uh, Graveyard Tokyo Shift. Which oh, yeah. I thought was so, so clever. Uh, you colored this up too. Um, oh, that's actually I, Smurf, Smurf colored that one. That's uh. Oh really? Yeah, that's a, a Smurf Smurf colored that one. Sweet, yeah, yeah. Because I remember this uh, from I think it was D and Q also. And I have my own colored version. Um, let's see if I can find it. Do, do, do. But yeah. Sean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so it was cool. back, you know, back in the the happy days where everybody was friends. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, I remember. I remember this. This was so cool. You know, gave me gave me kind of that uh, Dragula vibes, uh, for sure. And oh yeah, then... I missed it a lot on the um on the monsters car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That original Dragula. They um then when we did the fan contest for Magic Cop. You, you know, because I was going through a lot of people that was doing fan art for, for D&Q and stuff, messaging them, being like, hey, we're doing this contest. And you were like, you had it. I, I messaged you, and then like a day later, you sent me this fully colored. And uh, I'm like, wow, holy crap, dude. This is insano. 
and uh, just love this. And this actually won the fan art contest, with, and it's in the back of the Magic Cop book, uh, which, you know, one of my favorite fan art pieces. And it's so brings, you know, we're, we're really fresh creators, my brother and I. This is our, Magic Cop was our first book, and seeing all the fan art is just a totally, you know, like awesome moments. Uh, everyone seeing everyone's different designs and art styles. It's so cool. And this one won it. Uh, and then when we went on the Drawn and Quartered Fan Edition, you were also on there. I think that was the first time we spoke. And oh, yeah. then <laughs> uh, you did this one, which was another one of my favorites. It's in our ash can. Uh, I think this one. Amazing, dude. <laughs> I was cheating. I was cheating. Yeah, yeah I think they, they said you were cheating. Yeah. <laughs> Hail everybody in the chat. We got uh, Kino Subway. What's up, Chris Evans? Drawing Aces, 656 Comics. Um, Arch City Comics saying, Entertain Me. It sounds like he's you know he's doing that. I, I just hear that in Rose voice you know, when he says, Debate Me. It's like, Entertain Me. So, <laughs> hey, Are brother. you not entertained? Yes. You're not entertained. <laughs> For sure. Well, we'll see at the end of the stream if they are. <laughs> we'll see that. Uh, yeah, man. And uh, what? Oh, here's we have your your color version. Oh, wow, this is cool. Yeah, a little the city in the background. Yeah, it's uh... really nice. Those lanterns. Yeah, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, this is uh, some of the best uh, fan art from Graveyard Shift I've seen. It's just I, I love when you you you're taking. Uh, a concept from a book and then twisting it and like kind of like putting it in a different time or a different uh, universe. You, you do that for a lot of your fan arts. I know you did that, uh, that like old timey um, uh, Resident Evil piece oh, with yeah. uh, Nemesis. <laughs> Stars. <laughs> yeah, that, that was great. Um, but yeah, well, I got we, could, that. we could talk about the, uh, the masquerade. I, you know, I actually put out his bio today. If you guys saw on Twitter, uh, and, and you're following uh, Zade Comics or myself, Phil Pops, on Twitter, you would have seen this, um, where is it? This bio that I mocked up. Alan did the art for it and even the the logo here. So this is a character, uh, much like a lot of the characters in the Lost Pages, they're, they've been around for a while in my brother and I's head. Uh, we started with the silhouettes back in like 2012, 2011, and the the world kind of expanded from that character. And the Masquerade is a really important character to the whole universe. Uh, he is basically the first superhero in this universe, and he is based in the 1930s in Chicago. And in this story, we'll see him take on some mobsters, but he has some wacky villains as well. Think of him as like an old pulp hero, uh, like the Shadow, the Green Hornet, uh, as well as like that Batman 66 type um, character. So his villains are, are going to be kind of campy and wacky, and they'll have gimmicks to them, uh, stuff that you know, people that love that era of comics, that era of Batman 66, they're going to really latch on to. Uh, so I'll read out his uh, his bio. Chicago's first ca caped crime fighter, the masked master of disguise. By day, he dons the face of Easton Carlisle, socialite and top stage actor of the 1930s. But by night, he strikes evildoers down with the might of his rapier. As the masquerade obsessed with the dramatics, he mocks the city's underbelly by speaking only in rhymes. He is the eyes, ears, and mouth of the city, able to take the guise of anyone he meets. So beware beware the secrets you spiral to others, uh, for, you may, uh, for you may be confiding in the masquerade. Just one of the many players that make up the stories found in the Lost Pages. So I'm doing these kind of like uh, bios for each character for the launch page so everybody can get, get to know these, these, uh, these characters that we're throwing out here. Pretty cool. Yeah, I saw Crimstones too. Yeah, I posted that one up the other day as well. And everyone will be able to check that out uh, when we launch Friday. Uh, let's see more people in the chat. What's up, Ted Lehman? 
and EJ Morgis. Hey, brother. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you guys haven't already, hit that like and subscribe. Ring that bell so you guys know when we are going live. Um, and we're here with Alan Alonzo, the actual artist of the Masquerade story in the Lost Pages. Hey, now. <laughs> brother we got uh and he did this like look at this uh logo man he's been killing it on the logo work for the for these characters i'm just loving it super unique and very like um art deco you know style i really, uh, I really try to capture each character yeah yeah man i i think you're you're nailing it on the head so so when i i kind of uh approached you for this character um, I had, you know, descriptions of the masquerade and his supporting cast, um, the villains in it, his just kind of like love interest that, that we'll meet that we haven't really seen. But this was, you know, I sent you all those those character descriptions. And I think this was the the first little sketch you did of them, kind of like a collage I wanted to show off here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember that? That was fun. Yeah. So, what did you, uh, you know, think going into this project? What were you thinking of for these characters? You know, getting in the mood for it. Is there anything specific you want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, you know, like you said, the Dick Tracy stuff. Uh, I really love. I actually really liked Dick Tracy and uh, yeah. that era of comics. Uh, the Shadow and um, I was just uh, researching all these noir comics at the time, like the spider oh, wow, and yeah. uh, the old blue beetle and like all their wacky stories, <laughs> you know, yeah. how, how like the stories didn't age well, but a lot of them are a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was really stuff. And then you hit, it was like, you know, simpatico, you, you hit me up at the right time. Um, and I had just finished watching the shadow with Alec Baldwin. Oh yes, man, for sure. I <laughs> love that movie. And the Phantom too. Uh, if yeah. you like the Phantom, and I go, you know what? I'm I'm into it. I, I want to see what I can do here. Um, I was really uh, into uh, Batman the animated series as well. Kind of had that style going for it as well. Yeah, uh, Bruce Timm's artwork. And uh, but yeah, I, I listened to like Benny Goodman and and uh, what was that uh, all these big band artists to start listening when i start drawing and yeah really start oh, getting yeah. into the era and you know get gets it gets my blood pumping and then yeah it starts going down to down 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 yeah man i just that, and i just go man that that's awesome yeah when i um when i write these stories as well i'll listen to uh, songs that reminisce of what i'm writing um so i started listening to like a lot of uh 40s music 30s music um there's a video game that I don't know what it, what what year it came out. Maybe in like, man, 2010 or something. It's called the Saboteur. It was out. Uh, it was I think it was Pandemics Studios, one of their last uh, games they made. And it was you played as an Irish man in Paris during the 40s, uh, and he was a, a saboteur, and you'd go around uh, retaking uh, territories of uh, Paris. And the soundtrack in that game is awesome. It's totally you know like a you know, swing music and and uh, French music, uh, lots of accordion and stuff like that. So I'll listen to that while I'm I'm writing some Masquerade. Uh, but I love that you're getting into all the the culture of it, and it really comes through on the on the pages. Uh, you know, Shadow was a, a huge. I was a huge fan of the Shadow when I was a kid, and I think I had because we we would uh, rent movies from you know Blockbuster and then tape them onto blank tapes so i think the tape i had was shadow and the phantom were on one tape side by oh, side nice. so <laughs> nice. yeah so uh those were were favorites of mine shadow's one of my favorite characters and while i was writing this getting into the mood for it uh i was reading a lot of denny o'neill's run on the shadow and i love the narration of that uh, because the narration is like those old Batman 66 episodes, you know, you know, deep in the bowels of an abandoned library. Yeah, the narrator's uh, a character. Yeah, right. So I really dug that and don't see that anymore. I think that's something we could play up and go back to uh, you know, having that retro feel. So 
Uh, before, I didn't really do that with this character. And for this story, it has that narration element to it. So, or, you know, the narration, the narrator is a whole other character on top of it. He adds to the environment and to the theme of the story. Uh, so we got Baz. Hail Baz in the chat. My father used to listen to the Shadow Radio, radio Serial as a kid. Yeah, man, uh, that's awesome. My brother would do that as well. Um, just for fun you know you could still find them online and uh we before you know we got into cg and we were just doing silhouette stuff uh we took a break from the the issues for a while but i was still writing stuff and my brother's like hey why don't we take some of these stories and actually try to record them like a podcast like a uh like a shadow episode so we tried to do that but it never panned out to anything uh so yeah but all those things influence on on this character and i wanted to show off of this piece because this is the like final concept you came up with uh based on what i had before from our other artists and from descriptions of myself and yeah this is striking man i love how the character looks with yeah, we, the colors yeah yeah we really went back and forth on colors i remember i did a bunch of uh different yeah. <laughs> disco suits for him and mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, we uh, finally uh, settled with um, what, what you see now. Um, very uh, Scarlet Pumpernickel. In a, yeah, I, in a, I remember in you had um, a version that you called the Nightcrawler, and he was like, he had like Nightcrawler colors, blue and yellow. It was yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> I like when you send me stuff like that. It's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we What's could get about? into the the first page here which I've, I've showed off online uh and it's gonna be one of the two pages we show off on the campaign before you know we start getting updates in but this is uh the the first page of the story you know after the interior cover that we're gonna have and we have the you know the big logo it's kind of like an homage throwback to actually that denny o'neill shadow moment uh when he introduces the character i definitely wanted to to hit on that because I think it's such an I iconic moment, and you hear you have this the character uh, overly theatric because that's what this character is. He's obsessed with dramatics and theater, uh, Shakespeare and poetry, and always mocking his his enemies with that aspect of his 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 character. And man, when you were sending me the sketches of this and the the colors and oh man, it was just all coming together and like i say this all the time when i get pages in from the artist on this book i'm like okay this is now my favorite story in this book and then i go to another i'm like nope it's this one and so i'm just <laughs> so hyped up about everything that's going on in here it's just a dream come true seeing these these characters come to life oh man this is so cool and you know big splash page uh so what did you think uh, going into this page, you know, kind of like working off of a, a script that I had? Um, do you think my scripts are too stiff? I don't know. You, you blow me up on this, too, if you want. <laughs> but uh, have, you worked with, well, uh, no. have you worked with scripts before? Uh, no, actually, um, very, very rarely. I mean, I've I've tried. I, 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 I lie. I, I did work with scripts, but I didn't have that. Um, that consistent work at all you know it was just yeah i always just drew just for fun and um it's now that i'm like hey i can actually do something with this you know <laughs> like yeah sure uh, so back when i was with uh hardline comics yeah he, he would give me scripts and i would work off of those scripts but everyone has their style of writing scripts you know um I, that's what i've noticed uh he had a different style i've seen other tryout scripts for like marvel and image and those those writers have their layouts too so in a way yeah i, I was a big drama nerd so a, a lot of scripts are just like that so i just i just read them the same and i become an actor in the book and that's what i that's what i try to display no that's that's great man you know everybody when i'm i'm showing my buddies uh that we, we do the hangouts late at night um they're just loving this they're the 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 expressions on the faces and the emotion and the characters and just everything's so grand and dramatic 
uh, you know, everyone, you know, they're like, oh man, it reminds me of Bruce Tim. And everyone's digging it, man. This is something I definitely wanted to grab you and show your talents off, man, because you know, I've, I haven't seen sequential stuff by you. I don't think a lot of other people have either. So this is going to be something that I, uh, I hope does well for you in your, in your future going forward. And I think we're going to be working together for a while as well, because I definitely uh, want to do more stories. And, you know, there's definitely more stories for the masquerade that we have to tell. Oh, for sure. sure yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do have my own books that I, I am making. It's just, That's right. You know, yeah. Um, it's time. I'm, I'm one person. I do have a, a buddy of mine who helped me write a book. It's uh, all like anamorphic uh, characters. Um, but, you know, that was, but that's why I, I made the Hal comic so I can start uh, putting these stories that I have in my head out onto a page like you you and your brother have. Like, um, you guys uh, have really uh, set the bar. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's a gr- dream come true. Like, you know, because we tried to do this, like I said, like in 2011, before, like right when I got out of, out of high school. And, uh, you know, I was going to college at the time and just didn't have the time for it. And, you know, I was young. I didn't have as much drive as I have now uh, because, you know, once everything starts getting into motion, it's like, okay, let's keep doing this because it's like a a train ride, basically a roller coaster. So um, it's been awesome. And the the reception, the the fan base, and, you know, we, we showed off the, the cover of the lost pages last week and it got like 130 likes, which is the most likes I've ever had on a, a tweet ever. And, you know, well, we're, already get, we're already getting fan art, which is insane. But I'll, I'll probably pull that up later. But uh, that's on some uh, 6 a.m. stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, we're, those are actually going to be uh, stickers that are going to be available in the campaign. So each character has, um, has a, a hero sticker uh, that's in there. So that, that's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, and then this is the uh, another page later on in the story. This was kind of like a... A concept I had, I'm like, okay, because when when I'm writing these comics, most things are based around moments, right, or like uh, scenes. So I'm like, what's a cool scene that the masquerade could do? Like, he's a guy with a sword. He could also, you know, take the form of other people. He's a master of disguise. And this popped into my head, and I'm like, oh, how are we going to be able to convey that? how like i couldn't fathom of how to draw this but i knew how it would look in motion right because you know you've seen this happen in in multiple different you know mediums like uh, especially movies the one that definitely comes to mind is uh in the leave extraordinary gentleman movie that everybody hates captain nemo kind of blocked bullets with uh with his with his sword and uh i wanted that to happen here um and i think you nailed it man i i don't know how great my description was but this is on the nose it conveyed everybody knows what's happening here you know the guns are in the foreground uh and i just love this and i'm like this is i had you do this one because i'm like this is going to be definitely on the campaign like this uh, a a big action shot Uh, thanks man uh yeah I i had a little uh when I was growing up and I was young, I was taking animation classes. So that, that those skills really uh, helped when I came to this page. Yeah, sure. No, that that's awesome. And, and again, the, the emotion in the, the teller's face in the background, the masquerade looking like a badass. I did the letters myself. And then these guys, I, every time um, I showed this page to one of my friends, they, they're like, hey, is that Joey Diaz in the center? You know, the <laughs> comedian Joey Diaz? Like, he's looking good. He's looking trim. What's but, up, motherfuckers? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good impression, man. Uh, yeah, and I, I know we had... Um, originally, you had this guy in the center have an, a pistol as well. Um, and I'm like, ah, oh, we need that that Tommy gun. And then you were saying you didn't know, you know, if you wanted him to be you know, super fast as the flash, you know, stuff like that. But there oh, is yeah, an, ad- I wasn't, I wasn't clear on his powers at the time. Right. So, um, I was just, uh, Oh, well, yeah. Okay. It's just, you know, I just want to know if, 
if you wanted him to be that powerful and yeah he is <laughs> yeah him. yeah there's great. there's an aspect to the masquerade people will learn down the line throughout the series that uh he's he's got a mystical aspect to him which you know gives him the ability to you know change his voice and his appearance uh and you will see a little bit of that in here in this story but man i'm i'm so excited for for the masquerade and everything he's going to do down the line i think you're killing it with all the pages we're seeing and right now i think you're uh doing some colors live right now this is going to be the fourth page um which is like another you know grand moment where i wanted him to make his exit talking to uh this informant here sliding down uh you know kind of like zip lining so we can take a look at that yeah i had a Oops. had a time drawing that chicago theater <laughs> yeah man yeah i kind of you know this, since this is like you know old timey 1930s uh the masquerade his his alter ego is a stage actor you know pretty famous um thespian if you will and uh, he's doing a a play here in at the chicago theater and it's kind of like his his base of operations you know, in the future you'll see him um at, in theaters kind of got you know some similarities to the phantom of the opera vibe but he's he's kind of that character that breaks out crime fighters you know he's the first one people people know about him the the gangsters know about him as well because he's been taken taking them out i got a couple um, easter eggs here for you too yeah i noticed that man <laughs> i dig that i don't know if you, you know it's like eh, I'm like it, <laughs> i'll take it out and edit <laughs> no i showed it to my brother he's like no that's hilarious i like that yeah i didn't uh, know what play he was doing i was looking mm -hmm. up 1930s plays famous plays and mm -hmm. us, man it was it was a mess and then that just popped in my head and then uh this chick right here that's a caricature of the uh deadpool's uh girlfriend like oh yeah them. oh yeah no dude my brother loves that chick it's like she's the <laughs> hottest yeah yeah all these these background characters are so much work goes into that so I, I love that man i really appreciate that do the lighting it's just i just can't wait to to see everything come together man and this clock so, tower i based it off of wrigley the wrigley clock in chicago too oh nice yeah man i love that a lot a lot of you know we're my brother and i are from chicago a lot of uh stuff happens in chicago but like when we get into other stories like uh the wild card story his is you know off the coast of italy in the in the 1600s um and yeah, and throughout his life, he'll be everywhere in different places. And so this is this this book's going to go a lot of different areas. You're going to see a different, you know, cultures and uh, lots of action. So really excited about it. And uh, I was glad that you were able to come on tonight and, and talk about this, man, because I think you need to be on some more uh, streams for sure. I think we'll oh. we'll get you on for uh, when we're promoting this thing because. More people uh, in the network need to know about you, man. Oh, thanks. I, yeah, I, I'm so awkward when it comes to like being on camera and stuff, or like on the radio or whatever yeah. it is. Uh, <laughs> so if you if you hear like little uh, little quirks here and there, it's it's because uh, I get nervous and I can't I can't uh, fully express myself. And then you no. talk to me on mm -hmm. the phone or something like that. I'm totally <laughs> completely normal <laughs> and different. People like the the weird quirks and stuff. That's what uh, makes good YouTube, for, for sure. But you know, Ed, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it, and the more comfortable you are. Uh, I'm definitely got... getting better. Uh, I remember when I started sure. actually being on the Drawing Quarter fan editions shows. Um, yeah. Oh man, that was a fucking mess. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, I remember like when we were on the the Magic Cop one. You hardly spoke at all, like till like Tre Chester was talking to you and stuff like that. Then you'd speak, but. Yeah, all I remember were the big boobs that you drew. <laughs> For sure. We got uh, EJ Moore just very dynamic, and I'm digging the architecture. Yeah, that that uh, architecture is, is like something that's really important to definitely the city and the vibe of like, you know, that Batman animated series had the big architecture. Uh, that was a big part of, of Bruce Timm's style. Uh which is, it's, you know, it's going to be uh, an awesome part of the masquerade as well. EJ Morgis, he's actually doing uh, some work for Cyberfrog. I think he's doing two 
two stories for that next campaign. So definitely check that out. He's got a, uh, I don't want to butcher the name of it. He's got a Salamandroid's Death Sting. I think he's doing that one. And then Heart something, Heartbreak Horror. I think um, I signed up for a Salamandroid book for sure. Yeah. Uh, on the last campaign. So if that's it, then I'm definitely getting it. Yeah, you guys follow E. Well, he's he's got an awesome Instagram and Twitter. Uh, his style is is so cool. Now that's a guy. He's also a guy that draws some amazing boobs. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like if you took like Simon Bisley's boobs from the '90s and then you just stuck a syringe of Jello into them and just unloaded <laughs> into those boobs, man, they're amazing. Hail, hail, huge cans. Hail huge cans. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see what time we have here. We're at uh, eight nineteen. I think we'll we'll wrap it up. Uh, if you guys are not on the Lost Pages mailing list yet, uh, I can actually pull up some some stuff for that. Uh, if definitely get on the Lost Pages mailing list. The link is in the description below. And if you get on that mailing list, we have a special trading card that you guys are going to be able to get. Uh, it is a, a jam piece trading card that we're working on. Uh, we just need one more character on it. And each of the artists is actually drawing their respected character on, on that page or on, on the trading card. And then that'll be you know put together and that'll be exclusive to people on the mailing list. So we have a, a good amount uh, on the mailing list right now, but you know, if you guys want that extra trading card, it's going to be exclusive to that uh, availability. So get on that. You can go here, read up more about the the other characters, and heads up for everybody that is planning on backing um, Friday or or the week after that. There's a, another trading card that is just for the first week of backers, and that is the Andrew Huerta silhouette trading card so i'll pull that up right now as well you guys another amazing it. artist yeah man dude huerta i was he's so helpful he, he just loves everybody um in cg and just wants to help everybody out and so he you know, we commissioned him to do this this beautiful uh trading card for the silhouette and yeah you can only get it for the first week so get on there definitely uh, set a reminder and and support us so we can get this awesome book out to as many people as possible. Because these stories have been in, you know, in my head for years and they're they're ready to, to pop out onto the page. For sure. Is there anything else you want to uh, say, Alan, or plug? No, not right now I'm just pl I'm just plugging this book right now. Uh, Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, anytime I'm on a stream, I'm plugging the lost pages, you know, and check out Zade Zade's books. Uh, I fell in love with Magic Cop. I thought that was great. Thank you, man. Uh, great concept. Uh, hopefully, one day you guys get to turn into that video game that was first dreamed of because it's it's too cool. If oh man, if you guys can do that, like the uh, that Streets of Rage four that just came out. Yeah, oh, man. Fuck. Yeah, that's a uh, funny story about that. We were um, actually, you know, we work for a arcade production company, so we get like notices of like different licenses that come up and stuff like that. And Streets of Rage 4, we were in talks of getting that before they, you know, licensed it back to the the creators um, of the game. And so there was a time that we were actually, like, conceptualizing what we would do and stuff like that. Of course, you need the music. And out of that, like, want for, for, for that game, Magic Cop kind of, like, popped out of it. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're actually currently this weekend we're going to be starting the interiors on magic cop 2 uh just to kind of get at the head of the game i'm writing it right now and brandon is going to start the the first few pages um for the for the second uh you know for the sequel of it so by the time uh, the lost pages ships out we're going to have a bunch of magic cop done uh, so we could throw up a campaign for that and just kind of trying to get uh ahead of the curb on the turnaround time with these books. So you guys don't have to wait as long. So definitely you guys deliver, which is a big plus. Yeah, man. Yeah. Everybody, 
if you say you're going to deliver at a, a specific time, definitely do so. That that earns you uh, mad rep points around here. So yeah, thanks for everybody tuning in. We got Shane Mess in the chat that says, I come in and Phil is talking boobs. Uh, well, you know me, brother. Yeah. <laughs> thanks everyone for tuning in uh alan thanks again for coming on everybody follow thanks him for having me, man. yeah for sure I'm on and twitter and instagram on the at the how comics simple as that yes 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 uh links are in the description below and uh, we'll see you throughout the week with other stuff uh see ya latest